I meet a lot of people through my sport. It's a great way to socialise as well as to keep fit. My sport is funded through charitable organisations and at the moment, administrators are struggling to find funds. At Attitude, we decided to survey some of the key players in the disability sector to find out how bad it really is. It's a challenge. It's a significant challenge. Well, it's going to be a difficult few years. Gaming Trust funding for us um, is down by 25%. We've decided we're taking no new members for the next six months, and that's tragic. Certainly now in the financial climate that we're in, any surplus money that was around for that is just becoming harder and harder to source. So the organisation um, has got its back fairly hard up against the wall at the moment. We rely um, currently quite strongly on Gaming Trust funding to support the organisation um, from a salaries perspective across the organisation. Um, so it's currently having no impact upon our athletes and their support teams and, and um, the way in which we operate with them, but it does certainly have a significant impact upon the organisation um, to serve them. I mean, we get calls every week from people wanting money for various things, and really it's a at the moment it's a sort of a slash and burn and that, that money will just not be available. I was going to show you that. Philanthropist and entrepreneur Philip paston has been part of Auckland's disability scene for years. The reality of the credit crunch hit hard for him early this year. The biggest impact for me was um, trying to run a four day international event, Momentum 09, in February and um, because of lack of funding, lack of um, registrations, we had to um, pull the event. Do you guys look on our website? <laughs> Lorna Sullivan's a disability advocate. No, I'm still She's used to tackling to issues creatively and pulling solutions out of the hat. But these days, to to miracles are just harder to come by. Just this morning, um, speaking with a young man who's looking to leave home, you know, what he's got to realise is actually his options for leaving home are extremely limited unless he wants to live in South Auckland. Generally you, you, you can sort of consider that, uh, you know, for every two out of three applications you'll get a, get a positive response. It's, it's just, you're getting turned down now probably 80% of the time. Backup provides adventure opportunities for people with disabilities. It might not be classed as an essential service, but for hundreds of people who've shared the backup experience, it's life changing. If there is no backup, there is no experience out there, no ability for people with disabilities to go and do what we do and, and have the mind shift that goes with it. Um, we would like to think that, yep, times are tough at the moment, but we'll get through it and hopefully with this awareness and, and other initiatives that we've got on the go, that will, that will come about, but it, it is tough. There's no doubt the amount of available funding is shrinking. One example, the ASB Trust. They completely cancelled their March funding round. And their usual pool of $60 million was virtually halved by offshore events. Not every service provider is going to make it. Our latest motto is begging with pride. And we are begging with pride and we believe we will get through this. But uh, we're also being honest and we're saying, hey, um, Things are tough. We can't tell you exactly how it's going to be, but no, we're still taking applications. We have had to postpone two courses, um, one in May and one in June, but we've postponed them and we've rescheduled for September, October. This is a benefit issue, though, not a disability issue. It's a poverty issue. And one of the things that um, people need to realise is that many, many disabled people are poor. Organisations that provide services um, for the disabled person in New Zealand certainly have to, to look more effectively at their own organisations and look at streamlining the way in which they work and also look at cutting costs currently, um, but also looking at strategies that they can put in place to get through this, these, these difficult times. Too many groups doing roughly the same thing. And, and again, if the funding is, to, is for salaries, well, that's not really helping the, the, the disabled is, to that extent. I mean, these groups are going to have to look at combining, looking at what they're trying to do, and, and just looking at, at just reassessing what they're all about. 
For thousands of New Zealanders with disabilities, social inclusion is not always easy to achieve, as the expense of getting around has to come from their already stretched resources. FAB is an organisation that fosters social inclusion, and their priority has always been to provide transport to make things easy. So if you look at the disability sector, people will say the hardest thing is affording transport. So we said, well, we're going to take that barrier down and we're going to fund for people to come to FAB and home. So we use taxis and we use them really wisely and everybody shares taxis. So we've got an amazing little system going, but it's hugely expensive. And it's gone up because the petrol went up a few years ago and then well, a couple of years ago, taxis put the prices up and I haven't really noticed them putting them down again. Um, so the decision has been made, and it's widely supported by the members, is that we will no longer pay for people to come to FAB. So we'll only pay for people to go home. Um, that, yeah, that's, for me, tragic. It's pretty crap anyway. There is no funding, um, or, or, or the funding is not well organised anyway. Um, how do we use this general awareness of, of having to do things differently to actually create positive and constructive change in the sector? If we do go down, and we'll go down with a hang of a fight right to the last moment, um, we won't be the only ones. And it saddens us because we believe it will be the the extra stuff that will disappear for supporting the um, the disabled people in our communities. Not everyone sees the financial shake-up as such a bad thing. I see too many organisations, really, these people are funding their jobs. And I know it's hard to say that, but you know when you get an organisation that's got three staff, well, it knows it needs 120,000 just to keep those staff members on let alone what actual money goes back to the, to the community or their members. One of the problems is that we compete for limited dollar rather than cooperate for a good outcome. Um, and I think the, that the sector was driven into that during the health reforms, but has perpetuated it itself. I'm not so scared. I actually think people with disabilities, this is a great chance to say, this is actually what we want. We don't want 15 organisations doing this. We actually want two or three that are doing it well. So we've still got choice, but not duplication. It's going to be take a lot of brave people. And is the independence the disabled community has fought for under threat? Some of our guests speculate that the government may head back to an old institutional model of care as the cheapest and easiest way to survive a recession. There's a gap between people seeing the value of disabled people, you know, actually being out there doing something creative and, and progressive, um, and, you know, this thing of we have to look after these poor dears. <laughs> For the past five years, Attitude has met countless organisations, large and small, around the country, who are striving to improve the lives of people with disabilities, to make them more included and visible in the community. The current economy is going to test our nation, and the government's true commitment to this cause.